Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Solving Problems in My Farm. My name is Carla Garcia, Horto America's Technical Service and Consultant. And today we're going to learn about a very popular topic, strawberries. So I know a lot of people, they want to know how to grow strawberries at home or sometimes we also want to start our own production. And there are very, very particular mistakes that we would usually make uh, when taking decisions on how to grow strawberries. So stay for this video if you want to learn about how to do it. So strawberries are getting really popular and uh, of course there are different hydroponic systems that we can think about where we can put strawberries, right? Uh, however, this uh, plant is really sensitive. Uh, it's kind of different, two different crops like tomatoes, uh, cucumbers. So the management of the crop uh, is uh, very particular and we need to, to learn uh, which characteristics uh, we need to uh, maintain on the crop to have good production. So let's start by selecting the correct hydroponic system, which is one of the most common mistakes that we made. Uh, most particular when we're working like in a hobby system or sometimes even growers, um, uh, they struggle a, li a little bit about the type of hydroponic system to be using um, when using, for example, like indoor facilities that have like less space. Um, but uh, there are very specific characteristics that we need to think about when selecting the hydroponic system. First, this plant doesn't like to have a lot of water so we need to avoid the use of hydroponic system that are using a lot of water like for example the nft system uh, deep water culture system those systems are more developed for like leafy greens for example and i know uh, you can feed like the strawberries in an nft system and i don't want to tell you that don't do it because you can do it and you can grow the plant and you can get fruits uh, however uh, the yield that you will get from there and the quality of the plant uh, won't be ideal so if you want to create ideal conditions on the root zone you need to think about in a hydroponic system that can provide substrate and drip irrigation so we know this plant is very sensitive on the root zone so we need to select a substrate that provides the porosity that the plant requires which is around 17 percent porosity and with a holding uh, water capacity of about 60 percent so we want to maintain at least two liters of substrate per plant that's very important if you are thinking on like creating a hydroponic system for a strawberry you always need to think about the amount of substrate that you're providing to the plant again because the plant is sensitive uh, to the root Root zone, um, so we want to provide uh, like physical characteristics into the root zone and also we want to provide drip irrigation because we don't want to put a lot of water on the, our plants. Uh, we usually want to maintain um, like small events of irrigation through the day. So this is an example of a setup for a hydroponic production of a strawberry. You can see in here uh, we can use uh, we can use uh, drops, which is uh, like a plastic drop where you can put there the substrate, you can put there your strawberries. Uh, we usually put, um, a, remember that we need to put two liters of substrate per plant. So uh, in a one meter, uh, let's say it's a 20 liter uh, bucket or uh, sometimes it's 18 liter bucket. Uh, you need to think about the amount of substrate per plant and then decide if you are using like nine plants plants per linear meter or uh, 10 plants per linear meter and we usually want to um, uh, to maintain our plants in a zigzag accommodation so you can have like more space for them um, we also want to keep like a small inclination so the plant can hang uh, you know the strawberries can hang from the system we don't want the strawberry the strawberries I mean the fruits to be inside of the substrate because they can get mold Another option is the use of bags of substrate. For example, in here, we are showing Jiffy, which is a brand of substrate that is unrelisted, meaning that you can do organic production with this kind of substrate. Um, and in here, you can see, I mean, we have a bag. Uh, you usually uh, have to cut the bag in order to put your plants. Um, and you also need to cut the bottom uh, because in this kind of system that we call, uh, this system we call uh, the aggregate substrate with drip irrigation. So we are providing drip irrigation on the top and then we want to have holes at the bottom so we can collect the drainage. So same case for the strawberry trucks that I mentioned previously, the, plas the, the ones made of plastic, uh, they have holes at the bottom and you can, you can put them in a gutter, uh, which is a channel that will receive all the drainage. And you can also get that kind of uh, product. Uh, I mean, it, those are the channels and uh, the upper part will be the back or will be uh, the, the strawberry drop. So, um, you need to have a system that can collect the drainage and that can have drip irrigation on the top. 
Now, how we do drip irrigation? So again, this plant doesn't like to have a lot of water, so we don't want to run the system, I um, mean the irrigation system for a lot of time. Usually we want to provide around 30 milliliters of water per plant, meaning the drain solution per plant. Um, and of course, depending on the environment, uh, you will do like different events of irrigation through the day. Usually you could take like six to 12 events of irrigation per day. So making a summary of the hydroponic system, just think about a hydroponic system that can provide substrate, at least two liters of substrate per plant, and that can provide drip irrigation, and think about a way to manage uh, the drainage. I mean, you need to collect the drainage. Usually in this system, because of the amount of substrate, we don't recirculate the nutrient solution. You can do it, I mean, uh, if you have the technology to clean the water, I mean, some growers, they do that. Uh, however, usually this is an open system, meaning that we don't recirculate the water. Uh, we take the drainage, which is very important. Uh, we measure the drainage, pH, EC, the volume of the drainage, in order uh, to know if uh, the plant is having some problems or also to measure irrigation. So now that you have your system uh, selected, uh, we need to think about the irrigation and the nutrient solution. So we already mentioned we are doing drip irrigation and we need to think about a nutrient solution that is balanced for strawberries. As I mentioned, this crop is different to other crops. It's not the same, the same as tomato or lettuce or, or any other crop, uh, usually berries in particular, I mean, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, they require a different amount of nutrients. So pay attention to the recipes that you are following. Uh, we have actually in, in Horto Americas, we offer a short course that you can find available in our website. And in that short course, you will get like all the ingredients uh, so you can make your own uh, hydroponic solution for strawberries. Uh, another option is to just look for brands uh, that can um, uh, sell you a product that is developed for berries or specifically for strawberries. So we're thinking about a nutrient solution that is not high on salts. Usually the EC, the electrical conductivity of the nutrient solution should be uh, around one. Uh, we don't want the drainage to be higher than 1.2, this is Siemens per centimeter, uh, because this plant is very sensitive to salts. I know some growers they manage higher EC, but based on research, research, we know this plant is very sensitive to salt, so it's better if we can keep the EC lower uh, in comparison to other crops. So basically, that's what you need to start, right? To start your hydroponic system, like your hydroponic system, your nutrient solution, how to irrigate, and then we have all the rest of the information. I mean, you need to maintain a specific temperature, humidity, usually strawberries, we want to maintain them around like 22, 24 degrees uh, Celsius during the day. Uh, it could be higher. I mean, I mean the plant will tolerate. Uh, we want to maintain low, uh, low temperature at night. That's very important for flavor. Usually, we want to maintain a temperature that is uh, between 10 to 16 degrees Celsius at night. Uh, it's not that the plant will die. If you don't have that temperature, but it will help you to create sweet strawberry. And of course, you need to think also about uh, the air velocity inside of the system, like to have ventilation. Uh, you need to think about also light. Uh, if you are in a system like this one, there are very specific uh, information about the light intensity and we don't run your your lights higher than 300 micromoles per square meter per second for a plant factory, different case for a greenhouse. In a greenhouse, the plant is also sensitive to light. Uh, we don't want a lot of light inside of the greenhouse. Uh, shake load can be used in order to maintain a BLI around 20, uh, which is uh, what the plant requires to maintain good production. Okay, so um, think about all all the different aspects on management, uh, pollination, pruning, uh, there, there is a lot of information around uh, strawberries. However, in this video, I just wanted to share, uh, I know sometimes uh, the most common mistakes when starting with a system like this is the selection of the hydroponic system. So uh, I just wanted to summarize very quickly on how to start with a good system and try to manage irrigation and, and your nutrient solution as best as possible. So if you want to learn more about strawberries, check the description of the video. I will leave in there the guide of strawberries that we have developed. So this is a great guide that will summarize good information and it's totally free. You can get it using the link that will be on the description. And also I will share the link for the short course. We have the recordings available and sometimes we make uh, live short courses. So uh, if you want to have like a class, like two hours class on how to grow the strawberries, look also for the short courses that we offer. And that's it. 
I hope you, you enjoyed the information uh, that we provided today. Uh, please share this information with people that you know is interested in growing strawberries. And don't forget to subscribe and comment if you have any questions. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Horto America's Technical Service and Consultant. See you on the next video.